Well, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a different video than normal. Obviously, we're not in the studio today. We are actually in my home, and we're very obviously looking at the Elgu Jupiter. We ordered this from their Kickstarter campaign. I won't get into that too much. We'll talk about that in a later video. This is just the unboxing for this truly huge machine. I got it down the stairs pretty well. We do have a basement apartment, and I feel like it was a very controlled ascent not so bad. And uh, we're just going to get into this. Everything appears to be really well packaged. I'm not seeing any big dings or anything. Quite a few of them were showing up to people in um, plywood kind of outer boxes. And I didn't see that at all. Uh, I don't know if you knew, but plywood in Canada is ridiculously expensive. So I don't blame them. Probably taken, <laughs> honestly. Uh, we're going to open this up. And unfortunately, I have started a print exactly in the place where I wanted to put this machine. So I won't be able to set it up for another three hours or so, but that shouldn't really stop the unboxing. Okay, so I think what we're gonna have to do is tip this forward because we have very low ceilings. doesn't look like there's going to be any peel for this. There might be one on the inside. And there's all the things that we need to make this work. This seems to be, looks like we got two pieces of FEP, which is awesome because when I get into this tank, you'll see how large it is. FEP is not cheap by any stretch especially at this size. And we got an extra tool kit here. This was because I believe the Kickstarter reached a certain uh, level, like a certain amount. So we've got a quick start guide, a couple of masks, some filters, the ultra, ultra cheap USBs that everyone keeps telling them to not sell anymore. These very interesting things, these are air purifiers. And inside there's like an activated carbon thing with a little fan and then a USB on the bottom. And that's going to live in the back and basically clean the air inside of the enclosure, which is really cool. And we have the power brick, which seems to be a pretty standard brick. I'm not sure if this is the same one that goes with the Mars or not, but it looks similar. Some gloves. A hex thing, a whole bunch, which I was not expecting, a whole pile of fill adapters. So these are designed to screw onto a bottle and then they get plugged into the back and it keeps the resin at a certain height, which is amazing. I've actually printed an adapter for this to other kinds of bottles like Soraya. Uh, so that'll be really fun to play with. I was not expecting to get so many. I thought I was only going to get one but it looks like we got five, which is really, really awesome. Looks like we got another free year of Chidu Box Pro, which I will promptly throw in the trash. Uh, we've got an extra wide scraper, which is great. Now I have a thin one, a medium one, and an extra big one, which makes total sense when we take out the next part, which is the build plate. That is a pretty big build plate. I am a little bit critical of their decision to basically put it on stilts like this. Um, I understand, of course, that like this has to lower into a fairly deep vat of resin, and you don't want to you know, flood everything with it, but at the same time, I feel like 
they could have just done a little bit differently. Uh, it's already been done by other brands, and I'm just not a huge fan of this particular one, especially the fact that I have to level it from like four points. I think that's a little bit clunky. Oh, it's cavernous. It's awesome. Wow. <laughs> it just, like you see this in videos, you, you've, you understand that it's large and then you see it and it's another level of big. I'm going to pull out the resin vat here for you to see. Might be a little bit dark, obviously, because we don't have anything light-wise in our, in our home. Uh, I could get this plugged in, actually, because up here are some LED lights for when you're doing time-lapse or whatever that are supposed to be quite nice. Uh, originally, they had them as a very warm light and the community basically bullied them into doing something a little bit cooler, which I am fully on board with. I didn't do any bullying, but, but I'm glad they made that decision. Now, one of my big concerns with this monstrous vat is the weight. And when it's full of resin, can this thin film support that or is it going to sag or how is it going to happen i don't know but that is seriously huge and thankfully uh, i saw a couple of people early on when they received their units i think it was in europe or something um they had oops they had a different style of tank than was was pictured on the Kickstarter. They were actually sent prototype tanks. So I think there was like 40 something tanks sent out, which is really, really lame uh, for them. But thankfully, I think they already got their replacements. So good on Elgu for catching that error. Uh, would have been better if they caught it before it went out the door, but oh well. A little bit of peel porn off the massive display. Now, I don't recall what a new display is going to cost, uh, but obviously we're going to do everything we possibly can not to uh, have to do that anytime soon, so we'll make sure that there's absolutely no debris or anything. There we go. This is one of those machines where I wish that they had gone a little bit further and had something of a mechanism to pump the resin out. I imagine, I mean, obviously what you're putting in at the beginning of the print is going to be a lot less than when you're done your print. However, it's still just a lot. So we've got everything plugged in on this side and True to their word, they did add an Ethernet port, so we should be able to access this remotely from our computer, which will be amazing. We also have the USB up here on the side, not on the front, which I'm okay with. And this monster power button. And there's those, there's those LEDs in a very obnoxious sounding beep. So it's a very, very simple interface. This is just like a reskinned version of the basic Chidu uh, Mars experience, which I am not a huge fan of. But, I mean, it does work. I understand it. So there is that. So we're going to go up. Ooh, it's got like a growl. I do like that they did a, a nice sandblasted finish on the build plate. Sandblasted has been by far the best in terms of bed adhesion. Now, I do actually happen to have uh, a few tips for how to get your build plate uh, to adhere better if you're having that problem. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I also have some product from Monocure, um, which we're specifically going to be using in this machine. They did also send us a little container of plate bond, which is a... Um, I think it's like a, an extra bit of photo initiator or something. It, anyway, it's just you paint it 
onto your build plate and it helps with adherence. Uh, first time I've ever tried it, we've never had any problems with build plate adhesion because naturally if you're printing in a castable resin, you cannot afford generally to have any failure, especially at this scale because at minimum $100 a bottle USD, any failure is bad. So I had to wind this all the way down, or all the way up rather, so I had clearance. Now what I'm noticing here, this is their leveling mechanism. They've got acorn nuts on the bottom that lock into these little divots, so everything stays nice and aligned. And then it's just a big washer holding everything up. Tighten that down. I like that they went with double linear rails so that you get very little torsion, if any. Linear rails are not supposed to allow for any torsion whatsoever, but that we have two is a good sign, especially at this scale. Uh, but the thing that I don't know if they really accounted for was forward motion, because this is a very heavy carriage. And when this goes to peel up, this might torsion down. But time will tell. I'm not entirely sure quite yet. I like that they went with a double ball screw. Everything seems to be really nice and greased, so there should be very little, uh, what's the word, kickback or something like that. I believe I have 200 millimeters of height to play with. I know for a fact that Elgu has announced and they will be probably producing a 200 millimeter extension. I did get that mixed up. This machine has 300 millimeters of travel with a 200 millimeter extension for a total of 500 mil, which is pretty tall. Among other things on this machine, the feet can be leveled, which is awesome because, well, with this much resin, uh, you definitely need to have it all exactly where you need it to be. The rest of the machine has definitely quality features about it. Everything is made out of metal in one way, shape, or form. I am a very critical person when it comes to these budget tier machines. I really do believe that what a lot of people think are extras, you know, like Wi-Fi or, I don't know, just extra things, is, are actually really, really necessary. And this is a very bare bones machine. Make sure you get subscribed because this is not the full review. This was just the unboxing. Uh, I've just got a, the plate leveled and I have been playing with it for a little bit after the fact, but by no means have I formed a solid opinion quite yet. The UV exposure light is exactly the same as the Mars 3, which again, I'm not entirely sure if that's a wise decision considering how much larger this is. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of light leak that uh, I find very worrisome. Um, I mean, they say that 405 nanometer wavelength UV is not too harmful to humans, but I would challenge you to stare at that light for a little while and tell me how your vision improves. Uh, anyone at table height, you know, like small children or pets, I would be a little bit worried about them looking up into this light. But anyway, that's not a problem for right now. Right now, let's get it all set up in its new home and uh, we'll start printing. So make sure you get subscribed and like this video if you wanna see more of this kind of content because we are going to be publishing a full review video very, very soon aiming at the jewelry industry. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.